So to really highlight the strength of the energy approach is a situation like this. We have a ball that's initially having some upwards velocity, which then as it goes up, gets slowed down by gravity and then comes back down, speeding up. And at the same level, which we'll call h equals zero, has a different speed. So throughout this motion, if you remember our discussion on drag force a couple of chapters back, the drag force depends on the speed. So the speed will change and then your drag force will decrease. And it's going to be zero drag force when you're not moving with respect to the air. And then it changes direction and move back down. So this situation, if you want to track it in terms of using kinematics, it's very quite complicated. But we can still get a little bit of a handle on the situation even though it's so complicated by using energy to find the work done by the air resistant. And so let's see how that works out. Again, I make my little table. I get 20 meters per second and then 17 meters per second. I could put negative, but for energy, I just care about the speed, not necessarily the direction. The height is zero or the same for both cases. For my free body diagram, on the way up, we have our FG, and then because you're moving upwards, your resistance force points downwards. So here we note down that the angle is 180 degrees, give you a negative amount of work. But as you go down, right, on the way down, things change slightly. Your gravity always pulls down. But because you're now traveling downwards, your resistive force is upward. But it is still 180 degrees in the theta. So to track these forces is quite a bit of hard work. But we just want the work. It's OK, relax. Once we do the energy, it falls out really, really quickly. We talked about how the potential energy doesn't do anything. And then this work term here, the only force that is non-conservative here is the resistive force. So this would be whatever work the air resistance does. So then if we want to solve for it, we put Ke2 over here minus Ke1, which is your 1 half mv2 square minus 1 half mv1 square. Subbing in and solving. And as you punch it in, even though we could have set the downward 17 to be negative, you square it, doesn't really matter. Once you finish the subtraction, you do get a negative amount of work which makes sense because in both the upwards and downward case, the resistive force goes the opposite way of the displacement. And so it's taking energy away from the system as you expect with a resistive force.